Are you interested in dating in Latin America? Have you ever used dating apps to go on dates in Latin America? If so, this episode is for you. I'm sitting down with Juan Velez. He's one of the co-founders of Crema Social. You might have heard the ads they advertise on the My Latin Life podcast. Welcome back to the My Latin Life podcast. Since 2014, your trusted guide to traveling and living in Latin America. Juan Velez, co-founder of Crema Social, is on the podcast. Juan, welcome. Thank you, Vance, for having me here. Super happy to be here talking to be here talking to you. So my pleasure. Absolutely, man. You're in Medellin at the moment? Yeah, I live in Medellin. I'm from Medellin. I'm a, I have a local perspective about dating apps and foreigners coming here to Medellin and having dates with local people. So yeah, based in Medellin. Awesome. So I was thinking maybe for this episode, um, we'll spend maybe the first half talking about dating in uh, Medellin and in, in Colombia in general, maybe some differences between, you know, dating in Colombia versus the U.S., um, you know, kind of give people what they want to hear, right? And then uh, at the end, we'll talk specifically about crema social and maybe some of the differences of crema social versus, say, Tinder and Bumble and what's unique about your app and some of the problems that you're, you're solving with it, right? Um, so I guess we'll touch upon some of the juicy stuff first. Um, what are some things that uh, gringos need to know, in your opinion, when they come down to Medellin about dating in Medellin? What are some of the things they need to be aware of to maybe um, uh, protect themselves and to have the best experience possible? But yeah. Okay, Ban. So like, I will say that I've been hearing from other people on on YouTube, TikTok, or whatever these channels that normally they recommend to download Tinder, download Tinder and buy like passport subscription and move their location to Medellin or to Cartagena or to any different cities uh-huh. before and they arrive. I, yeah, before they arrive, before uh-huh. they arrive, like the pregame, like. Let's, yeah, there, yeah, there was that, a term for it. We used to call it, oh, I forget the word, like front running or something like that. You know what I mean? And like you like line up all these dates before you arrive. Yeah, but I think it's super dangerous, to be honest, because you are telling the bad guys because a lot of teen, the girls probably works with uh, with gangs or people that are not very, very good people. So you're you're making a lot of mistakes because you are telling the bad guys that you're going there to be prepared. So they can be prepared when you're coming, and they're gonna, you know, I don't know if you have heard or, re, or if you have read about all the all the news Scopamine about mean and robbing yes. and all stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Today I just read a, a a news about a gringo that just got killed yesterday. Jeez. Was found in Laureles. Damn. And it's it's like a daily news from from this type of topics. So the first thing that I will suggest is, first of all, don't use Tinder passport in advance for the pregame. Second of all, I will suggest that if you want to meet real people, because other thing that is happening, let me share this with you. I don't know if you have heard about Parque Lleras. Parque Lleras in Medellin used to be a very fancy uh, place to go to party. But right now it's full of like bars made for gringos. And if you go to that bars, you're going to see a lot of girls that just want to make you buy drinks. Uh-huh. And they're going to they're gonna receive like a commission or like right. a they're fee. They're not normal girls. It's like they are not, yeah, they're normal girls. girls. And they are going to tell you, oh, Bans, you are super cute. You want to buy some drinks? And you are just like, yeah, let's buy some drinks. And they are going to earn money because they are making you spend money. Uh-huh. So their the relationship with you is not like real. They just want to make you invest on the, on the, on the bar yep. because they are going to receive a fee. So I will say that the first thing that they need to take into account is don't use Tinder passport before coming. 
don't go to Provenza as don't always. Go to <laughs> don't go to Parquegeras. Try to. I, I meet. heard they clean it up. I heard they like just this past year they didn't they renovate the whole thing. Mm, you can still you know it's completely different. I remember when I was at college, I used to go to Parquegeras and everything was super nice and you will see good girls, but right now you just see prostitution. Still, you're still seeing a lot of prostitution, girls walking down the street, yeah. waiting for their clients. And it's even worse. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will suggest, basically, you need to find local guys like me, local people that understand how the, how the, the, the city behaves, where to meet real people. Because if you want to meet real people, you need to meet these people, let's say, through me, because I have a girlfriend and my girlfriend can introduce some other girls, uh, but they are not like easy girls. It depends. I will say, Bans, and it depends on what you're looking for. If you want to get laid right away, just go to Parquejeras and God bless you. You just don't get killed <laughs> or, or basically just meet right. local people. Because it is a very friends of a friends thing. I think one of the... Um observations that a lot of guys have when they come down to Colombia is this very group based and table based like girls don't really grow go out in like groups of like two girls to party or whatever it's like always these mixed groups of like 10 people and so people have had the observation that it it's actually a bit hard to uh to approach girls in in the in the club or at bars in Medellin and in Colombia, because they're always in these mixed groups and they're always kind of like at a table. They're not just like, there's not, there's not a lot of like stand up bars where you just free roam around. Is that kind of, does that ring true? Yeah. Yeah. Actually for Colombians, it's difficult to do that. It used to be interesting in like 10 years ago, everybody was super open to talk to anyone. But right now, normally what you will see is that everybody is in groups. If you want to dance with a girl, probably the girl is going to tell you, no, I don't, I'm not interested. But if you see a girl or two girls that are alone, completely alone, waiting for guys, that for me is a red flag. Yeah, yeah. It's a completely red flag. But some gringos, they say, oh, I'm super cute. I'm super hot. I'm handsome. This, I have my passport, gringo passport. Uh, these girls just want to dance with me. Red flag right away. Because... Good girls are on groups, on tables. Uh, and that's why you need to know first local people. Because if let's say that you you just came to Medellin and we're going to have some fun this Saturday. So I had my friends, my friends between girls and guys. We're going to a club and we're going to be on a table. I'm going to introduce you some of my friends, girlfriends as well. And that's how you can meet these people. There's no other way. And but if you're going to use Tinder, probably like I will say that 80 percent of the people that are on Tinder right now here in Medellin, probably they are working girls. Bad intentions. Bad intentions or just prostitution. But bad intention is even worse than prostitution because you can get killed easily. Uh huh. So just completely avoid it. Yeah. Yes. Avoid, yeah, because if you if you think all over when you are texting, you have no idea who you are texting with. Probably it's a guy. Probably it's a different girl. And right. yeah, Bumble. So I, Tinder. I, I think I think that's pretty clear. Don't use Bumble and Tinder. Horrible idea. Especially, and by the way, we should probably say especially in Colombia. You know, if you go to other countries in Latin America. You know, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, they don't have these problems as much because they don't have too much scopolamine and drugging and stuff. You, just, you still have to be careful, obviously, but the danger is like 10x worse in Colombia. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's it's super. It's super. Yeah, it's it's not good to use them. And also. When a girl I want to give you this advice because I heard from a guy that 
he was going out with just one girl, but then the girl say, "Hey, I can I go with my cousin because I'm afraid that you red flag, do... red flag." Yeah, because when you are talking with the girl, with one girl, it's gonna be the other girl like putting some scopolamine, and you're done. So, yeah, it's gotta be one on one. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta be one on one and take all the time you drink with you, but it's yeah. I will say that I don't recommend this kind of imaging, this kind of dating apps on Medellin specifically, probably wow. on Cartagena as well. That those are like the most cities that we have prostitution and, and bad situations. So how could guys who want to live in Medellin, because people won't just want to go to Medellin anyway, because it's got good weather and networking and, and all the rest of it. So how should they go about meeting women we'll get to crema social obviously as being a solution but um should they do salsa classes should they maybe walk around the university and approach girls during the day should they walk around the mall and approach girls during the day what are what are some of the re- methods that you recommend yeah i will suggest for instance going to college universities or salsa classes bachata classes that's those are like the best way to meet people real people uh going to a mall it's weird if you approach to a girl in a mall the girl is gonna say what the fuck what are you trying to do you are trying to steal from me because we are very we are very suspicious of everybody Mm. Uh, so it's better to i would say to go to a university if you want to take classes spanish classes go to a university Uh, and i was thinking literally just like walk on the campus and just be like no 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 yeah actually you can just go to a university grab some lunch and probably just look around but it's a good place to to meet people because you know that these people are students and go to i would say nice universities like fancy universities uh and i have a joke here that the most beautiful the, the girl is because she lives in in the most dangerous place. If you're gonna meet a girl in Provenza, let's say, and she's super cute, probably she's from a neighborhood or like Bello. Bello is a very dangerous place to go. So normally we have a joke here in the gym when you meet a girl that is super hot, probably she lives in the worst place you can go. It's funny. I don't know if you understand my joke, but it's very well known here in, in Medellin. Sure. The, the, anyways. How, how would you say it in Spanish? Entre más linda la, la chica es porque vive más en una comuna peligrosa. Es porque vive en una comuna más peligrosa. Entre más linda la chica, más peligrosa es la comuna donde ella vive. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that's a, a, a bad joke that we have here. Uh, anyways, I get it. Um, we don't normally talk about dating, by the way, on the My Latin Life podcast, but we're doing an exception for Crema Social because they uh, they sponsor the podcast, and um, and uh, you know it's what the people want to hear a little bit. So we keep we'll keep it PG, but uh, rare rare dating episode. One, I'll I'll hit you I'll hit you with uh, one of my secret techniques, and I'll. Let, I would love to get your feedback on it, but for the audience, secret technique right here, you probably have never heard anywhere else, okay? Instagram, and what you do on Instagram is you look up the beauty pageants, the Miss International Columbia. There's like, people probably don't know this, but there's not just one beauty pageant in Columbia. There's like dozens of and they're, they all just have different but similar names, right? It'll be like Miss Colombia Mundo, Miss Medellin mm-hmm. Internacional, like all these different random names, right? And they have yeah. this everywhere in Latin America. And you go to the Instagram page of the beauty pageant. And then they tag all the girls on the beauty pageant page. And then you just go find the girls that way and then DM them. And you know they're like normal people pretty much because they're competing in beauty pageants and then obviously they're they're beautiful and everything. So that's um uh that's uh 
a good lead source that people could use. What do you what do you think about that? Yeah, I haven't thought about it. I think it's a really good strategy. Definitely. Because they are uh yeah, a public profile, people know about these people. Yeah, definitely. And I was thinking I was talking with a girl on Provenza. Let me give you this story. And I was like, hey, let's have some pictures together. And she was like, no, 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 no pictures at all. No pictures at all. I was like, oh, man, why? And I didn't say anything, but I, I, I left that table right away. But that's a good, another way you can use to meet real people. If you want to take pictures and they are allow you, they allow you to upload the pictures on social media. Mm. That means they have no boyfriend. <laughs> But if they if they don't like pictures because they don't want to be visible for authorities or because they want to be on the on the shadows, you yeah. know you you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah. But I but I think your IG page, uh, your Instagram page, how you get these people. And my question for you is, are you getting replies from these girls? Because sometimes it's very difficult to get a reply because your messages get blocked. Well, probably. you never, you never, uh, never, you don't get what you don't ask for, right? Uno no recibe lo que no pide. Um, so you might as well shoot your shot. Um, de acuerdo. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously the, re the response rate depends on your profile. Do you have a check? Do you have followers? Are you public or private? So it kind of depends on all these things. I'm a little bit out of the game now, uh, honestly, because uh, I have a, a long-term girlfriend. But um, the the beauty pageant one is because pe people know to like they'll go to like the club pages like on Instagram. Like okay, like you know whatever the big nightclubs or fancy bars are, the rooftops or whatever. So they'll go to the the Instagram page of the rooftop and then see wow. who is the rooftop following because the rooftop bar the bar is usually following like a bunch of hot girls, right? And then so you can sort of find normal hot girls that way by like who is the club or the bar following. Mm -hmm. Usually they're not like actually tagged in the photos of the profile. Sometimes they are, but you'll actually find more going into who is the, the club following um, and, you know, who follows the club as well. But following, I think, is a better signal to noise ratio like if the like the most nightclubs are following like a hundred super hot girls um so that's one way to find them but you're getting like club girls you know what i mean so you could maybe go to like a salsa studio instagram page and be like okay who is the salsa studio following and then the salsa studio is probably following a hundred super hot girls and you can do that one and then uh, you know, you, you could kind of go down the list and think like, what are some other, um, types of pages? Like, who are they following? Maybe it's whatever. And I, I found that the beauty pageant one, uh, was pretty interesting, uh, that not a lot of people know about, cause we don't really have this beauty pageant concept in North America as much. Yeah. And, and bands, you know what? Uh, yeah. As you're saying, if you want to follow and reach out these girls that are being followed by the nightclub, probably they are going to be nightclub girls. They're going to just chase your money yeah. uh, and they are just fancy and they just want to be in a fancy car and they just want. It, it depends. To... Sometimes it's just a girl that went like once and the, you know, the promoter was like, I got to get your IG. And then like, she hasn't been back in, you know, a year or something. So it depends. You got to kind of feel it out, but. Yeah, yeah. Probably if you watch the pictures and the videos, probably you, you will feel it. Yeah, you will yeah. feel what type of girl it is. But uh, it makes sense also to go to Salsa Classes page, Instagram. Uh, you can find more normal girls there that just want to meet real guys and have a real relationship. But it depends also on the gringo. If he's coming here to get la laid or he just look, because I've been hearing that a lot of guys are coming here to find a girlfriend and trying to spend the whole life with them because it's, it's it depends on the purpose of the visit basically mm -hmm. i would say mm -hmm. um and i guess getting away from uh the the strategy on how have you kind of like 
How has it evolved where people, where normal regulars go out in Medellin? Because, you know, they used to go to Provenza and now they don't. Then maybe they went to Laurelis or something. Now they probably don't. Where where do people kind of go out now? I know Medellin's a big city and there's different areas and different social classes, but maybe you could give some some people tips like where the normal people are, are going out these days. Normally, uh, rooftops. Rooftops or restaurants. Uh, we, we used to have like when there is like a hot spot like Parquilleras or I don't know if you heard about La Estrada. La Estrada is in, it's in mall, Milla right? de Oro. It's a mall. Yeah. That mall used to be super fancy for nightclubs when I was at college, at university. Uh, it was super fancy for four or five years. And it's like a season. After five years, it goes down and it appears like another spot, uh-huh. another nice spot. It lasts for five years and then it goes down. It's like that. Here is like for seasons. Uh, right now, actually, people go to the rooftops where they can have long, uh, like dinner and cocktails, mm-hmm. fancy restaurants. And I never been to, to be honest with you, I, I never went to Laureles to have party in Laureles, like to party in Laureles or Bello. Bello has g- really good like places, but probably dangerous places also as well. Like, do you went to what is this name? Uh, Obrero, Parque Obrero. Parque Obrero is is in in Bello. I've never been to Bello, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wild. It's 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 a bit wild, but I went once. It was the party was super good there. But you need to be aware who you're talking with, dancing with. Uh, over there, probably the people are more willing to dance with a stranger. Uh, but let's say that normally gringos go to El Poblado, and in El Poblado, people normally go to rooftops right now that are close to Provenza, but they are not like in Provenza, Provenza itself, close to Provenza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it has changed a lot. It has changed a lot. And you normally go to the rooftops uh, rooftops with friends of your friends, but you never go alone. To find people there and just to meet people, it, it's not very used. And it's super weird if you want to reach out a girl or, yeah, if you're going by yourself, probably it's not a good way to do it. And what, what should the guys kind of be subcommunicating right uh in terms of their messaging should they try to be more interested in the country and show that they're kind of looking to stick around colombia for the long term yeah i don't know if you if you probably you've been here in mexico i don't know if you hear reggaeton music listen to reggaeton music yeah yeah, i went to you know who i saw uh this past week was yandel okay yandel yeah so if you want to like create a spark on the girl right away, if you want to like be in the same feeling, I would say that it's good to know about J Balvin, Maluma, Carol G. When you start talking about Maluma in the first, like, oh, you're from Colombia. Ah, I know Maluma or Carol G. You're going to start like from the girl. She's going to, I don't know. You're going to em- empathize with her right away it's super important that you understand better our culture and reggaeton here in in colombia is super important so once you start talking with a girl if you can start talking about j balvin maluma carol g or whatever singer from colombia mm-hmm. you're gonna immediately i will say that you're gonna earn like a hundred points immediately yeah. right away and that's like that's like the easy stuff right like every yeah. you know you can obviously go deeper, maybe go into like Musica Popular, Colombiana. Yeah. And, and Vallenato. Some, Vallenato. If you know the Vallenato stuff, that, that's a little bit like you've done a little bit more research than just the reggaeton. Yeah, um, yeah. It's going to give you like, a, like, a, like 500 points. I will say yeah. if we measure in points, uh, Vallenato <laughs> or Musica Popular is going to give you 
a thousand points. Yeah, uh, binomio de oro. <laughs> yeah, binomio de oro. We used to hear, listen to that when we were at school. So you're gonna earn like ten thousand points if you go deeper and deeper. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's there's layers to Colombian culture and and really every Latin American culture and. People will, will learn this and maybe you see this with um, some of your friends, uh, like we have our, our mutual friend, our, our gringo co-founder of Crema Social, right? Um, where maybe at the beginning he was he was staying in sort of those gringo vortex zone neighborhoods and he was like one foot in, one foot out. But now he's more uh, involved in the local community, right? He's like running a local business. He's got offices. He's staying in non-gringo neighborhoods uh when we recorded our podcast he was out in rio negro um so and you sort of learn about the culture you start eating more arepas and uh you well, know chicharron. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not like chicharron honestly no? really I, wow i don't like chicharron uh, it's probably oh. the only one of the only foods that i'm like yeah, asco um <laughs> but uh i had I actually had arepas last night here in miami um and uh, it was good, um, but uh, but yeah, it's kind of like a gradual process of um, like kind of like digging one layer deeper, right? Yeah, yeah, probably that's, and I I feel it because when I was living in London, uh, I did the same. I went to where Colombianos used to live, and I was with Colombianos all the time because I wanted to feel like I was like out of my country, but in my country because I was with these people. I understand that, and but it all, as I as I was saying, it depends on the purpose or the objective you have. You want to just stay here for just a couple of days. You just go to a poblado, find gringos, and go party with gringos. But if you want to stay here for a long time, like midterm, probably you can come to Laureles, where it's my office. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more tranquil. It's more quiet. And you can stay, you, you can find local people. You can go to different restaurants, local restaurants. Yeah, but it depends. It depends on the purpose of, of the gringo. Because Austin, he, I thought, oh, I think he wants to, to, to stay longer here in Colombia. So he's living, he's living in El Poblado though, but he has a lot of Colombian friends. And Colombians, we love to have foreign friends mm -hmm. because we can practice our english uh and it's good to share our culture yeah but it different it depends and we have different layers and families if you if you come to uh colombia uh, and you meet my uncle my mom my father everybody's gonna be super kind with you what do you need man do you want more arepa or do you want mm -hmm. coffee? Do you want sure. fresco jugo? Everybody's super kind here. Probably that's why also uh, gringos love to come here and to feel like the traditional values of our families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about families for a minute. Um, uh, I guess it's kind of what you know, right? Because you grew up in it in Medellin, but like, um, I'm trying to see how to weave this from a, a dating perspective. Uh, but also just maybe you could speak to, um, the, the, the family dynamic in, in Medellin and what you'd want to share with the audience about that. Yes. Let me, let me tell you something. When you are very like serious with a girl, you, you are super willing to introduce that girl to your mom. To your father and you are waiting for the approval mm -hmm. because it's super important for a guy or let's say for me that my mom approves my relationship my father approves my relationship mm -hmm. because th that's super important you need to have like a, a check from your mom and your father and even if you have a sister because they need to get along well that's one thing but if you are dating with a girl you also, if a girl doesn't want anything like serious with you, she's never going to talk. She won't talk about their, uh, her family. She's not going to take you to her family. But when she's willing to 
introduce her mom to you, take you to her home because something it, it's first of all it's it's a good girl and second of all she is looking for a serious let's say relationship with you yeah this episode of the my latin life podcast is brought to you in part by crema social crema social is like tiktok for international dating it's an app you can download right now on your phone and three out of four people on crema are single women the app was founded in colombia So unsurprisingly, there are a lot of Latinas on the app, by the way. So how does it work? Crema Social is a social meal experience where you invite a hot girl for a lunch date via video call and food delivery. New concept, so you'll have to try it out for yourself, but this is probably the best way to meet Latinas before you visit the country. So if you're in Latin America or planning to visit Latin America, download Crema Social now and start getting dates right away. There will be a link in the description to download or just search Crema Social on your favorite app store. Have fun, guys. This episode of the My Latin Life podcast is brought to you in part by BitRefill. BitRefill is the best way to spend your crypto in Latin America. Purchase gift cards or mobile refills from more than 3,500 brands in 186 countries instantly, safely, and privately. You can also apply the code MYLATINLIFE at checkout to get 10% back on your first purchase. Go to bitrefill.com for more information. This episode of the My Latin Life podcast is brought to you in part by Job Stacking. If you are a remote or hybrid worker looking to maximize your earning potential, then Rolf Holtze, the author of Job Stacking, guarantees you'll be able to double your income. This is the exact system Rolf has used to take his own income and those of many others beyond 20K a month. So what is job stacking? It's this idea of working multiple remote jobs. You might have heard Rolf, he's worked five, seven, even nine remote jobs at the same time before. And by the way, job stacking works equally well for non-technical roles. So no, it's not just for the nerds. So if you're ready to job stack, then book a discovery call with job stacking and see how they can double your income in just nine weeks. In the show notes in the description, there will be a link where you can book a call directly on the Calendly of job stacking and be talking with them as early as tomorrow about how to double your income as quickly as possible. Yeah, and also she needs her mom's approval. That's super important. And her mom is gonna ask you a lot of questions. Okay, Vance, <laughs> what do you do? Are oh, you are a, I don't know, an influencer? Oof. I don't know if it's good or, or bad, or are you working in a regular like job, like in a corporation? What do you do? Yeah. What your father does, what your mother does. So everybody's like want everybody wants to understand what is like your background, your father background, your mother background. Uh, that's very important. That's very important. Yeah. And probably the way you're gonna meet them is because they they invited you to have lunch or dinner with you either on on their house or in a restaurant but that's super important like like the first dinner with her parents it's super important and it's, you're going to receive a lot of questions about who are you and your background mm -hmm. and how quickly does this typically happen so what do you mean like how mean? how how um how quickly Quick. in the relationship or in you knowing the the girl uh, would 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 that typically take place? We'll say that probably fifteen days or a month, because you normally go like you start dating with this girl, uh, and within a month, if everything is going well and you're talking all the time, you're super, let's say, in love in this moment because you 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 cannot stay without her and she cannot stay without you probably in less than one month i will say that this could happen it depends but between one month and two months is when you're gonna meet her parents and if 
she's willing to introduce her pattern is because definitely it's something real behind it. But it depends, Vance. It depends on your purpose. If you're just coming here just for 15 days, it, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get laid in the, in the same night that you came here, probably you just need to, to find girls at the nightclub. And it would be the easiest way to do it, to get okay. it done. It's typically less than a month. And you've probably heard in the States, people can go six months without meeting the parents. It's crazy. Wow. It's wow. like, it's, it's insane, dude. But yeah, it can take a long time in, in the Canada, the U.S. to meet the parents. No, incredible. Yeah, it's because here, normally in the U.S., what I've been hearing is that when you are like 16 or 18, you just, you left, you leave the house right away. But here you still have 25 or 28 and you still sometimes live with your parents mm -hmm. because it's hard to afford like a new house, new apartment. Uh, so for us, it's super important, like the, the, the family and all you've been living here. I know. So, you know, that we have a lot of holidays and holidays. In Colombia, we have like 15 holidays. It's like the most in the world, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and normally holidays is to be with our families. Yeah. We, yeah, it's, I think, I, okay. It, it's to be with our family. So we go to our I don't, grandma house to have like lunch together and stay with everybody there until like 6 p.m. Uh, but holidays here are at our base or our, their principal purpose is to be with our families, not to, to do anything. Normally, when I talk with gringos and gring, gringo companies, they say like, fuck, another holiday. Come on, man. It's like two in a row. And actually, in November, this next Monday is holiday. And the second Monday of November is holiday as well. Because we celebrate like the dead people holiday, like Dia los Muertos in Mexico. Yeah. And the you other guys one celebrate that, the, but in what do you uh, call we, it? We we call Dia de los Difuntos. Dia de los Difuntos. That is de in, los difuntos. in English, uh, for the audience, they call it uh, All Souls Day because it is it is like a Catholic holiday, right? I believe yeah. All Souls Day. So in Mexico, Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead, and then uh, in in Colombia, Day of the Defunct. Yes, but we we don't celebrate that like in Mexico. The that they right. go no, to I know, street. I know, I know, I know. But, but it's it's. But it's still I would a bank holiday. It's, yeah, it's like an excuse to have the holiday. <laughs> That's so funny. It's still a bank holiday. I was just in. Uh, I was just talking to my uh, Colombia lawyer. Or sorry, my uh, my Panama lawyer, and he was saying that this month in November they're celebrating both their independence from the USA and their independence from Colombia. And they're two oh, different yeah. days. So they have two independence days in the same month. Yes, yes. Yes, they got independent uh, in 1903, I think, from Colombia. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was funny. Wow. All right, um, the second holiday is because Cartagena Independence Day. Because Cartagena mm -hmm. is a real, it's an important city for us. Uh, but it's weird. We have a lot of holidays. It's good, but we also work super hard. We work from eight to six o'clock or eight to seven o'clock. We are very hard working people. That's why a lot of American companies are coming here to, to find labor that speak English because we are very good, but we are like 10 times cheaper than any, any, any other place in the States. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um... All right. Well, let's talk about uh, Crema Social a little bit. Um, so people will know a little bit. They can check out the previous podcast that uh, we did with Austin uh, on, on it. I also have another uh, video on my YouTube channel uh, kind of explaining uh, so people can see the uh, Crema Social review we did there as well. Um, dude, I made a random video about Crema Social, just like, like a 10 minute video, just kind of put it together, threw it up and it, it has over a thousand views. And, uh, it's like, I think ranked if you search Crema social on YouTube, cause I get, cause it's like all SEO traffic from, from YouTube. So people are searching Crema social on YouTube and they're, they're coming to my video. Fun fact. Wow. Um, 
Interesting. So, uh, but yeah, so t- tell us kind of about uh, what the problem that you were trying to solve was, the the problem that you found with the other uh, legacy data yeah. apps and, and what you guys do different. Perfect, yeah. I think we are trying to solve a problem that I would say that dating apps market it's on balance. Basically, I think everybody have used dating apps. You probably, me. I know that a lot of people that are here in this podcast uh, have been using dating apps. And you normally like uh, it's a man behavior. You like almost everything because you want to get matches. <laughs> that's it, That's the reality. I don't know if if you do that, but I probably ninety percent of the people, the guys, swipe right like, on everything. Uh, yeah. I, I, at least from what I remember, you're not supposed to do that because it actually lowers your your ELO score. I know, I know, I know that is. I'm not talking that it's like that all the time, but it's yeah. like okay, this girl, it's not so beautiful, but okay, it's okay. Okay, like, <laughs> and and the problem. Is that normal? Uh, the dating apps they have like twenty percent of the users are females and eighty percent are men. Mm-hmm. So if it's like that, so there are a lot of men tracing or like behind all these all all these girls, and these girls normally have a ton of messages, have a ton of likes, matches, and messages. So you don't have a lot of choices or options. Or you're gonna wait a lot of time to get a reply from a girl. First, it's very difficult to get a match if you're not handsome, cute, whatever. Second, when you get a match, you write down immediately to the girl and you need to wait for the girl to reply. And the girl has a hundred messages. So what we're trying to solve here with Crema is like, if you like a girl, just go into the girl's profile, just book a day, Check a day where, where you, you're going to check her availability, mm-hmm. what day she's available to in order to accept an invitation and at what time. So you just pick a date, you take a look of her availability, and you just send a request. So you pay to Crema like $20, and when she accepts your invitation, Crema is going to send food to her. So in this case, you are showing to her that you are willing or you are you are very interested in getting to know more about the girl. And that is how you stand out from other people because everybody is liking people on Tinder, Bumble, but here you're just basically going after one girl and you're just directly saying to that girl. It's the sniper approach. Yeah, basically. And you're going to have... Here we are having a video chat and it's completely different when you have this type of conversation, when you are seeing, when you're watching the girl, when you are able to to feel the girl, to to show how you express uh, the things, I don't know, the thoughts that you have about Colombia, about Argentina. You also have the chance to understand the difference between Cali, Colombia, that is, the girls from Cali are very different from Medellin, but they are very different from Bucaramanga. So I think it's it's a better approach to have video call with them. And if you are in a video call band, you're not going to see any filters on the girl because you know that also girls take advantage of filters of Snapchat, Instagram. Uh, you don't allow filters? How does that work? No, no, we don't allow filters. How, how though? Because can't they just upload anything? No, they, they can upload the pictures, the videos, but when you are having this conversation, you are Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're looking right out direct to me who I am and 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 if the girl also band is willing to appear on camera, as I told you at the beginning, I would say that it, that is our green flag. That is definitely a green flag because sure. they are not gonna do anything wrong to you. And, and that's a good idea for a pregame. If you are willing to come to Colombia or to Argentina, because we have girls from Mexico to Argentina, you can move from different countries to different countries and, and pick up a girl and have a 30 minute video call with her. So, and it's $20, probably $20 in the States. It's, it's not that much. It's just like a McDonald's meal. I don't know. 
-hmm. something super cheap. Anyways, uh, you, you, you asked me also something that I forgot that I need to reply. Don't remember if you if you ask me other thing, or, well, I I think that this uh, I understand there's video profiles sort of so you're not just relying on photos when you're choosing the person they also upload how does that work like a thirty second video or something like that they upload yeah what we said to them is they need to upload like a nice video ten seconds video fifteen uh -huh. not not so long and then a couple of photos. And then their availability. Is, is a video of, a must? They have to do a video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They they have to upload a video because it's like the cover video. It's like the first thing because Crema works like TikTok. You scroll down and you, you see different profiles, videos. Cool. And when you see like a video that it's, it's good for you, you just swipe and you're going to start watching the pictures and then you're going to find their calendar. And these people are willing to have a nice video conversation. They like to talk to gringos or foreign people. And I, I've i been seeing that we also have Colombians guy using the app to meet people. So if Colombians can afford this, not all of them, though. Uh, because if you want to go to a, a rooftop, probably you're going to spend more than 20 bucks with a girl. Mm -hmm. So I think this is good because it's like the first filter. If you had a good chemistry with the girl, it's good to meet in person. But probably if if the conversation is not evolving, uh, you don't have any good chemistry with the girl, mm -hmm. it's, it's probably better to move away. And and, and so you, can you set your location? Like no. To where or the, is it only where you're at, or no, can it, you can you do a, a a a teleport thing? Yeah, yeah. It's not about. It's not based on your location. You just pick, okay, I just want to meet people from Colombia. You just select Colombia country, and you're going to start watching a lot of Colombian girls. I want to meet people from Argentina, so you select Argentina. I, okay. You don't need to be and in Argentina. You, and there's no more, uh, there's no, not like a city filter, only a country filter? Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on the next release that is going to be tomorrow. So since tomorrow, you can do a deeper filter. So you, you are in Colombia. You can say, I want to meet people from Cali. But I'm based right now in Bogota, but I'm uh -huh. going in a few weeks to Cali. So I want to meet people from Cali. Uh -huh. So you can do that. I'm, I'm going to Buenos Aires so I can filter by city. This is going to be after, uh, at the end of this week. You, you will be able to do it, but you will have to pay this feature. It's not going to be free. The, this, this city thing. Okay. And... But you don't need to be on the same city. That's super important. Because some guys were telling me, oh, I need to be in Medellin to use Crema Social. No, no. This is made for, for people that live outside also. People from Spain are using the app. Uh, people from Canada and United States, basically. But you don't need to be on Medellin to find people from Medellin. Or in Peru to find people from Peru. Okay. And it's, it's more than just Colombia, right? You have people from all the different countries. What are maybe the, the top three or top five countries by number of users? Yeah, I will say that uh, Colombia, there are a lot of beautiful people in Venezuela. <laughs> yeah. Venezuela. Girls, Harder to visit are, though. <laughs> hard, yeah. Hard to visit though. I understand. I, I know. I know we have from Venezuela, uh, Mexico. Mexico, we have also that. That's like the third country. No, Argentina. Sorry, Argentina is the third country. Peru, the fourth one. The fifth is Mexico. Chile, and we are open. We are launching Brazil. You know, Brazil nice. speaks Portuguese, and we're just creating. We're just open in, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Beautiful girls in Brazil. They are super hot. Super hot. Okay, awesome. That'll be really good. Um, you know, I I, I, I wanted to share something. It's funny because I was talking with some girls that were invited by other gringos. And some of them were telling me ah, the conversation was awkward because the guy didn't know what to say. And and it's it's funny because I understand that probably that's why there is a lot of dating coaches there in the United States. 
because the dating coaches tell the the guy how to to manage the conversation because some of them are super in super quiet but it's funny it's funny to hear a girl saying oh the, the this guy didn't didn't say anything or the conversation was super awkward i was trying to talk to the guy but the guy was super quiet mm-hmm. that's there are some feedback that we are receiving from from girls when we talk to them about how what the experience if they like it but yeah i don't know what do you think about dating coaches um huh? you know for some guys it might be necessary um uh <laughs> Uh, we've had a couple uh, podcasts with a couple of the guys, uh, okay. but we try not to have too many on the podcast. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a skill like any other, and and people do uh, can get can get better at it. Um, I did have a question for you, which is, you know, when I went to one to go make my video about Crema Social, the one I put on YouTube that I mentioned, the, you know, the review one, I wanted to see what other videos were already there, and what I was seeing was actually videos of girls reviewing it and being like, Sabes que hay una app donde puedes recibir comida gratis, blah, blah, blah. Come on, what has the the reaction been from uh, the girls in these countries in terms of their uh, acceptance of this concept? Yeah, I think it, we have a very good comment about the way we can connect different cultures. The, the excuse is the, is the food. So that's why you've been watching, hey, you can receive free food. Uh, and they are super willing because they are safe on their home. They don't need to go out and meet with a stranger. They are on their home. We deliver the food through Rappi. That is the, the, the service that we have here that is like Uber Eats or DoorDash. So nobody knows about their location. The only no, the only people that knows about their location is us, operations team, mm-hmm. our operations teams, and so they are super willing to try the app because this is the excuse. If if you were here, Vance, I will say to you, hey, Vance, let's go and have some coffee together. Mm-hmm. I will invite you because this is like the way we see that someone is interested in getting to know more about us. That's probably a Latin culture thing or a Colombian thing, but it's the way we show interest interest on other person. Hey, I wanna I wanna send you some food. Can we have a video call for 30 minutes? Basically, that's our message. So the girl is oh, if this guy or this person is willing to to send me something to have a to have a virtual date, that's good. Uh, but it's because it's it's based on our values, traditions. Uh, it's a culture thing here in Latam. And how do you keep the girls from just turning this into a meal ticket where they're just signing up for all these dates to get all their meals paid for for a week? Is there like limits to the amount that they can do per week? Or how do you... How do you uh... No, there, there's not a limit. If they receive an invitation yeah. one per day, it's okay. And uh, we don't have any limits for them. And but they're not gonna get rich doing this. <laughs> well, uh, they, you this, don't get any money, right? You just get food, but yeah, but it's not like OnlyFans. OnlyFans, you can get rich if you sell right. your content. But here is just people that love making friends and are willing to 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 test different things and because people all the time are on their phones. Mm-hmm. And if they can use Crema Social to meet people in a different way instead of texting, because texting is it's horrible, boring, and you need to wait a lot of time to to receive a reply back from the girl or from the guy. Uh, I think it's okay for them, and it's also the safety thing because nobody knows where they live. It's like you and me. You know that I live in Medellin, but you don't have my exact address. Uh, I know that you are in Miami, but you, I don't have your exact address. And the more conversation we have, probably more confidence or more, can, uh, how do you say, I, I can trust more on you. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much. Mm-hmm. 
And so I guess uh, people do the the video call right, and uh, the, they send the food, and uh, that costs money. But then when you message the girls by text, they you kind of keep the conversation going by text, and you can move it to WhatsApp. Do you find that people are doing multiple uh, food dates with the same girl on the platform yeah. or are yeah. they like moving the girl to WhatsApp and then doing maybe video calls on WhatsApp and then you sort of lose the transactional value there because you you probably make some sort of margin on the, the food or the delivery, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, actually, we, we have seen that normally guys start with a drink that is $5. So mm -hmm. that is like a new feature that we have there. So I don't want to spend $20 on this girl. I just want to <laughs> have a first five yeah. video coffee. call with her. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just a, 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 a quick coffee. So they are doing that. They are doing the quick coffee. And then because it's just five minutes, the call finish right away so they are like willing to test the other like the real date that mm -hmm. is 30 minutes and normally some of the girls are chatting outside already on, on, on whatsapp but it's okay but they still have an invitation from other guys uh, but i think normally it's like two dates two virtual dates yep and they are having Instagram because they can they, they can share Instagram. They can play on the video call. They can take photos. It's a very funny thing to do, like to break the ice. But it's okay for us that if, if they are talking outside, uh, if they are, basically what we said to them, hey, don't share your personal details right away because your safety also. Mm. Uh, but they are still using the app. The guys still inviting other girls and the girls still receiving invitation from other guys uh, i think it, it's it's normal behavior on this dating app normally people wants to move to whatsapp because it's easier to chat and sometimes or our purpose is also that they can meet in person when they are here in latam mm -hmm. that's our so they need to have obviously whatsapp in some point and tell me this, do you have any statistics about like how many dates the average girl goes on versus how many the average guy goes on? Yeah, I don't have that number here. But I will say that if a guy, we have like a 60% acceptance rate. If a guy, imagine that you are inviting 10 people, 10 girls. From those 10 girls, six girls are going to reply accepting the invitation. Mm -hmm. So it's good. So you don't have to to to, so more to be than, on more the, than fifty percent invite to acceptance rate. Yes, that's that's something very good. Also, an issue, but it's it's going well. To be honest, it's you know that Latin American people be we are very unpunctual. We are not on time all the time. Yeah. So that's the uh, issue, eh? Getting the girl to show up to the call on time. Yeah, that's an issue. We, but normally we have like a five minutes delay call. So the girl, we are on top of the girls also, like reminding them that they have a call, that don't forget about the call because mm -hmm. it's, it's normal here in Latin America. Ah, I forgot the call. But we are on top of that. So people are on time on the first five minutes. Sometimes they came five minutes later, but five minutes, I think it's it's normal. So we are getting good results in 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 those terms. Any other interesting statistics that, cause you've been running this for a while now, like over a year, right? And yeah. you've been adding features of course, and I'm sure it's been evolving, but ha do you have any interesting, other interesting statistics that you could share? Not in this moment that I'm thinking, but have seen that people are, they get involved super quick with the five minute video call. It's super interesting because you are talking with the girl five minutes and you want to stay talking forever with the girl. So the guys are buying the real day with the, with the girls. And what I'm seeing is it's funny because when a guy starts inviting girls, he is starting inviting all the girls. It's, it's like he cannot, he get attached to it mm -hmm. because it's, it, it creates on you like a, how you say that stick to it. Because it's interesting to talk with a girl and at night talk 
with another girl. You will see different perspectives. How you you can, and the good thing is that sometimes people think that you need to speak Spanish, but the app do the translation for you, the transcription. So that's also a good feature that we have. You don't need to speak in Spanish with the girl. You can practice Spanish, and Latin girls love to teach Spanish. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I will say that if you give it a try, I under I know that you're gonna you're gonna get stick to it because it's interesting to get different perspective of Latin American girls. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's I think it's like any app, right? Like it's you know you kind of gotta acquire the customer, get them to use it a couple times, and then once they're in, sounds like they're they're pretty hooked, both the guys yeah. and the girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's interesting. It's interesting what we are doing, and it's completely like out of the box because it's like a Zoom video call. It's rapid involved, and and it's a dating app with TikTok. Scrolling down instead of swiping, liking, it's just sending invitations, and and that's it. And also the guys, I would say that has the power to see which ones they want to invite. And you don't need to wait for a match. Uh, I think it's good. Awesome, man. Um, well, yeah, th this has been really interesting to hear a little bit more about Crema Social. There will, of course, be a link in the description where uh, people can download the app. Um, it's on both iOS and Android. Yeah, yeah. iOS and Android available. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, any kind of final message that you want to share with the audience, um, you know, where they can find you or call to action, uh, any of that good stuff? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I will say to the guys that probably are listening to us that are using Tinder because probably 80% are using Tinder or Bumble or dating apps, try to give it a try uh, on Crema. They are going to see a completely different experience talking Having a video call with a girl is completely different than just chatting and, and meeting in person, uh, waiting probably two weeks, two months to meet that girl in person. And just be aware of of, of dating apps that probably scams on and catfish. But yeah, I would suggest that if they can give it a try, I know that they will will fall in love of, of how does it work. And, and yeah, that's pretty much. And uh, this is also something that we built from Colombia with other three gringos that uh, have been testing dating for a long time. So we understand clearly the market. So my invitation is create a profile and start using the app, inviting people for $5. It's not that much. It's super cheap. And you, they can start testing and reaching out these girls that are very willing to have that conversation. Awesome. I love it. Okay, Vance. Cool. Well, this has been another episode of the My Latin Life podcast. Again, our guest today, Juan Velez from Crema Social. Go ahead and download the app today, guys. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, there'll be a link in the description where you can download the app, iOS and Android. And also for the audience, wherever you're listening to this, maybe it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Please be sure to subscribe. We put out two episodes a week with amazing guests like Juan, and you won't want to miss an episode. Ciao for now.